let's not sugarcoat it. This is the ultimate question. Bigger than, what's the meaning of life? Or, who finished the milk and put the empty carton back in the fridge? We're talking about the most mind-bending, existence-level mystery. Why do humans exist? The short answer? A lot of things had to go absurdly, improbably right. Like, win the lottery while being struck by lightning levels of right. And even then, you still need opposable thumbs. So no, it's not just one reason. It's a cocktail of cosmic luck, physics, chemistry, biology, and the fact that the universe didn't completely botch the recipe. So let's rewind the cosmic clock and unpack this step by step. Let's start with the Big Bang, because that's literally where everything begins. About 13.8 billion years ago, the universe exploded into existence from a single, infinitely dense point. But here's the kicker. The explosion had to be just right. If the universe had expanded too quickly, matter wouldn't have clumped together to form stars, galaxies, and us. Too slow, and it would have collapsed back into itself like a cosmic souffle gone wrong. The amount of matter, the strength of gravity, the speed of light, the charge of electrons, all these constants were fine-tuned to to an almost suspicious degree. Some scientists call this the Goldilocks universe. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Which begs the question, was this luck divine design, or are we just one of infinite failed universes that didn't make it? Whatever the reason, our universe had the right ingredients to keep going. And to be honest, it feels a bit like the universe aced a baking challenge on its very first try. The sponge rose, the icing set, somehow we got the cake. Also, dark matter and dark energy, two things we barely understand, had to behave in a way that let galaxies form instead of turning the universe into a featureless soup. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was basically just hydrogen and helium, useful for balloons, terrible for building humans. We need heavier elements, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. And where do those come from? Exploding stars. When massive stars go supernova, they forge these heavier elements in their cores, then scatter them into space like cosmic confetti. Every atom in your body forged in a dying star. So for humans to exist, we needed generations of stars to be born, live out their hot, explosive lives, and die in just the right places at just the right times to seed the universe with life-friendly ingredients. Think of it like a galactic compost cycle. Nothing goes to waste, and eventually, something beautiful grows. And if you're wondering whether you're special, yes you are. You're stardust with a podcast. Earth had to be in the Goldilocks zone, not too close to the sun. Hello, Venus, not too far. Hi, Mars, but just the right distance. Earth sits in what scientists call the habitable zone, where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist. But that's just the start. Earth also has a magnetic field field to block deadly solar radiation. It has a large moon that stabilizes its rotation. It has plate tectonics, which recycle nutrients and regulate climate. It even has just the right size to hold onto an atmosphere. Basically, if Earth were an Airbnb, it'd have five stars, glowing reviews, and a note that says, would evolve life again. And let's not forget, Earth is weirdly rich in water. We don't just have oceans, we have lakes, rivers, glaciers, clouds. It's like the planet went all in on hydration. Honestly, if planets were competing in a planetary reality show, Earth would win best all-around personality. Plus, Earth's chaotic early days, volcanoes, asteroid bombardments, shifting crusts, helped stir the chemical pot in just the right way. Chaos, it turns out, is great for creativity. You can't have life without water, or at least not the kind we know. Water dissolves things. It transports nutrients. It's stable across a wide range of temperatures. It's basically the universal backstage pass for biochemistry. But we also needed the right chemical conditions, carbon-based molecules, stable temperatures, and a planet that could cook up amino acids, proteins, and eventually cells. How did it start? Maybe in deep-sea hydrothermal vents? Maybe in shallow pools struck by lightning? Maybe aliens sneezed on a rock? We don't know exactly, but somewhere around 3.8 billion years ago, Earth figured out how to go from chemistry to biology. That first self-replicating molecule was the universe's biggest flex, and once that molecule copied itself, it was game on. From goo to you in 3.8 billion years. Not bad. And just to clarify, this wasn't a straight line. It was more like a drunken stumble across time. Time, trial, error, mass extinction, repeat. Earth hit the reset button more times than a frustrated gamer. Life had to survive asteroid impacts, ice ages, toxic atmospheres, and whatever killed the trilobites. It wasn't just life, it was resilient life. The cockroach spirit was strong. Once life started, it didn't just hop straight to humans. It was microbes for billions of years. Earth was basically bacteria land. Then came oxygen. Photosynthetic microbes began releasing oxygen into the atmosphere, which allowed more complex life to evolve. Multicellular 
organisms, nervous systems, skeletons, each a big upgrade. Evolution isn't goal-directed. It's trial and error, natural selection, and a whole lot of mutations. Most species die out, but occasionally, a fluke works. And one fluke led to animals with brains, spines, and the ability to ask annoying questions like, why do we exist? Let's also acknowledge the sheer persistence here. Evolution is the original R&D department. Relentless, messy, but eventually brilliant. And then came legs, lungs, eyeballs, wings, warm-bloodedness, fur, feathers. The evolutionary buffet was open, and nature just kept piling on. Plus, mammals had to survive the dinosaur apocalypse. If that asteroid had landed anywhere else, the age of reptiles might never have ended. So yeah, thank an asteroid for your Spotify playlist. One lineage of apes got especially clever, not just tool-using clever, but let's build a fire and roast marshmallows clever. What made humans different? Part of it was brain size. Part of it was bipedalism. Walking upright freed up our hands for tool use. Suddenly, we could shape the world around us, carve spears, cook food, throw parties, build pyramids. Big brains meant better memory, planning, and language. Free hands meant we could make things. Combine the two, and you've got a recipe for civilization, or chaos, depending on the day. We were now animals who could write Shakespeare or burn toast while watching reality TV. Now comes the weird part. We didn't just think, we started talking. Language let us share information, coordinate hunts, pass down knowledge, but more than that, we began telling stories, myths, legends, explanations. We imagined gods, laws, nations. We built shared realities. That's how you get religion, democracy, Marvel movies, language creation, culture. And culture could evolve faster than biology. That's why your DNA is 99.9% .9 the same as your ancestors 10,000 years ago. But your phone can talk to satellites. Also, shout out to gossip. It sounds petty, but gossip helped early humans figure out who to trust. Language turned social survival into a full-blown community affair. Turns out, who said what to whom might have been just as important as how to make fire. What really set us apart was our ability to cooperate in huge numbers. Bees and ants do it too, but they're all siblings. We humans work together with strangers because we believe in the same stories. Money isn't real. It's a story. So is government. So is one nation under God. These shared myths allow millions of people to act like a single organism. That's why we can build cities, launch rockets, or argue on the internet. And let's be real. Without shared belief in invented ideas, we'd still be throwing rocks at squirrels. This ability to scale up cooperation, thanks to language, belief, memory, allowed us to create everything from grocery stores to universities to the concept of Monday. And then, Somewhere along the way, we became aware of ourselves, not just alive, but conscious, able to think about thinking, to feel awe, to fear death, to write poetry, to ask why. This is the biggest mystery of all. How do neurons firing in a jelly-like brain create a sense of I? Science doesn't fully know. Philosophy's been chewing on it for centuries. But somehow, the universe evolved a creature that could observe the universe. That's either the ultimate cosmic joke or the punchline of something profound. And if you've ever stared into the night sky and felt tiny and important at the same time, you felt it. Also, humans cry during movies. That's gotta count for something. Now here's the final twist. Even with all that, we're still here because of luck. Lucky that no asteroid hit us at the wrong time. Lucky that climate shifts didn't wipe us out. Lucky that one tiny group of Homo sapiens made it out of Africa 70,000 years ago. We're lucky our ancestors didn't die in childbirth. Lucky someone discovered fire. Lucky others figured out penicillin, plumbing, and burritos. And lucky we didn't collectively decide the wheel was too round and go back to dragging things on the ground. Luck is the invisible thread running through our whole story. It's not glamorous, but it's real. So, why do humans exist? Because the universe exploded just right. Because stars died. Because Earth is weirdly perfect. Because life happened. Because evolution gambled on big brains. Because we learned to talk, share stories, build cities, and wonder. But mostly, because we got lucky. We are the thinking dust of dead stars, floating on a rock in space, asking where we came from. And somehow, that question itself might be the answer. And hey, if nothing else, we're the only species that wonders if the universe has a sense of humor. If that's not worth something, I don't know what is.